Hello the hell there, neighborinos. Okay, we got a few things to talk about. The first one is a continuation of a story that I touched on last time, and that is the investigation between the big three console makers. We, um, as I stated last time, there is there is that investigation that will cover based on the based. It's the entire investigation is based in the EU, so that. Thing is supposed to judge whether or not the the services that they offer are fair for the consumers so uh, one of the biggest things that you may know by now is that if you buy any of your games through the PlayStation Store Microsoft Store and depending on their services the Nintendo eShop you may not be buying the game but rather the license to play it so as a result if your if your internet goes out then you may lose access to it whereas if you buy a physical copy then you own the game and anybody who has access to your system can play that game um, one of the other big things is the auto renewal service just as what just as what was touched on last time and depending on the course of that investigation those may go the way of prepaid cards personally i use the 12 month card i pick one up every black friday and that has been working great for me just because of the the deals and stuff during that week but whether or not we can actually count on those to work for all of these other services that we rely on such as games for gold the xbox ultimate pass which may or may not be launching with that with the xbox streaming console which i touched on in one of the other videos or the Nintendo online service which just recently launched that is up in the air as per what happens with that investigation as far as anything that happens with that though I will be sure and let you guys know so I guess let's move on to the next thing okay so one of the other pieces I found out in today's roundup was that Sony is going to stop selling the digital codes through their brick and mortar retailers. That meaning that you can no longer, you will no longer be able to buy a prepaid game card and then scratch off the code and plug it into the PlayStation Store and you'll have the license for it personally I, I feel that is in fact anti-competitive because that was how I actually bought a game like a week ago dude like the the game on the PlayStation store was listed at $50 I found it on a game card at GameStop no less for 30 so dude i saved a good 20 bucks by not going through the playstation store and i don't know about you but personally i have noticed that just about every game you get on the playstation store is going to be full price unless it's unless it's part of one of those one of those sales but typically they're not like uh dude that frankly this just infuriates me it, it's hard it's hard to focus right now just because they're they're trying to bleed your wallet dry that's what it feels like just knowing that sony is trying to bleed your wallet dry in the heat of this stupid investigation that the eu actually has launched so that 
that whole thing. Now, it, it just feels even more justified to me. But, I, I guess if, if you want to pay $50 for a game that you could get for $30 at GameStop, be my guest. Man, that, that's all I can say. Okay, a, a little bit better news this time. So, the game Quiver, as you could probably guess, it's an archery game. Q-U-I-V-R. Is being released on the PlayStation VR store in a little over a week on the 16th of April. Now, it's already released on the Steam store for the Rift... Vive and Windows Mixed Reality Systems. Uh, this one is, like I said, largely archery based. You would end up using the motion controllers in the same fashion that you would the, for the bow in Skyrim. It's got a 92% positive rating on the Steam store by the users rather than some critics who are out of touch with other users. We'll we'll get into Rotten Tomatoes later, but that that's another story. Anyway, Quiver coming out next Tuesday on the 16th. If you like it, check it out. You never know, just might. Oh, it's got a free demo on Steam if you want to check it out. One last story for the night, and this one is about how Jason Rubin, the Facebook VP of content, explained why the Oculus Rift S, which debuted last week, or a little over that, did not have the Oculus 2 name, as some would have predicted. That is largely because... As he states, the changes necessary to make it an Oculus 2 would have been substantial. And when you compare the original Oculus Rift to the Rift S, it's a lot like the changes made between the Xbox One and the Xbox One S. Changes are there, yeah, but they're, they're, they're not exactly huge. Like, uh, for example, um, one of the biggest changes is that rather than using multiple USB ports, it has just one. It, it just takes a single USB port connected to a computer in order to run the Rift S. However... The thing that the, the thing that I do really like is the three ninety nine price tag. But when you compare it to the Quest, which is going to be launching here in about a month, which has a pure three ninety nine price tag, Quest seems a lot more attractive to me, just because it is purely standalone and does not require connection to a PC. So that that's why that that's why it's so attractive to me, and it's already proven that it has the processing power capability of, of running some really nice games, games that I personally enjoy, and I'm sure a lot of you do too. So personally, I would say save save that four hundred dollars that you may have been that may have been burning a hole in your pocket for the Rift S and spend it instead on the Quest. So, I guess that about finishes the news for the day. If you guys liked it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. And as always, don't forget to tell me how I'm such a horrible person for giving you all this news. That's all for now.